Hello, thank you for joining me this morning. We gather again in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, we take a moment to acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, healer of the sick, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, good shepherd of love, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, light of the world, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees, does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any one of those. Then Samuel asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, There is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent, and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold, and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, There, anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel, with a horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to Psalm 23 today is, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. 
But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Moses. 
We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this one is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not for God, he would not be able to do anything. He answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and are you trying to teach us? And they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saved, you see, and so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. It feels very strange and surreal to be celebrating Mass like this with you. I never could have imagined doing it this way. It also seems ironic that this fourth Sunday of Lent is called Laetare Sunday, with Laetare meaning rejoice in Latin. It's meant to be an upbeat, joyful day to indicate that we're more than halfway through the season of Lent. And yet I have to be honest and say that rejoicing is not one of my main feelings right now with all that's going on. I know that many people are rather anxious, perhaps a bit disoriented with their usual routines and ways of life disrupted so suddenly and uncertain as to what the near future holds during this pandemic time. Many people right now may be able to relate to the man who was blind since birth in today's gospel, not being able to see where he was, where he was going, how long it would last for him, or what was happening around him. Well, thank God that he had his hearing and other senses working to help him to survive. This darkness reminds me of a time about 12 years ago when I was vacationing at a place near Springfield, Missouri called Fantastic Caverns. It had a network of caves that attracts about tens of thousands of visitors each year. It's the only drive-through cave system in America with wide enough cavern paths to fit a tram car that drives you inside to see all the beautiful rock formations. It was a wonderful sight to see, that is, when you could see. At one point, our tour guide stopped the tram car and turned off all the surrounding artificial lights so we could sense just how dark, total darkness really can be. It was pitch black. I couldn't see a finger in front of my nose. He kept the lights off for about one minute as he described some of the blind fish and insects that lived in the caverns there. And even after just 30 seconds of that total darkness, I started to feel a bit uncomfortable because the dark just felt so oppressive. I felt even worse when our guide was having trouble figuring out which button to press on his remote to get the lights turned back on again. And what a great relief and joy it was to see the lights come back on to reveal the beautiful cabin walls and surroundings again. Amen. Well, that experience gave me a taste just what it must have been like for the man born blind in this gospel, and to suddenly have his sight restored. The difference was Jesus Christ, the light of the world. As the man born blind gradually came to discover, more and more as this gospel scene unfolds, the gaining of physical sight was surely a wonder to behold, for such a miraculous happening like that just does not happen every day. And yet, the physical healing wasn't the main point of this account in the Gospel. The greater miracle at work is the healing of the man's spiritual sight as to who Jesus really is. 
He is put up for comparison in this gospel account with his neighbors who remain ignorant about Jesus and with his parents who lacked courage to support their son when the authorities confronted him. And the authorities and Pharisees who refused to believe in what was right before their very eyes, that this is the Savior and light of the world, the ultimate sign of God's love. You know, Lent is a time that God generously offers us to help restore our spiritual sight in a clearer way. In order to grow in that way, we have to be willing to face some uncomfortable darkness in life. We have to be willing to look more carefully at our lives and see how we may be living in ways that reflect how those neighbors, parents, and authorities of the gospel act. With ignorance, lack of faithful courage, or refusing to acknowledge Jesus and others. So maybe we should be asking ourselves, do I love others as Jesus loves me and asks me to love? Do I forgive anyone who has hurt me? Or ask for forgiveness when I hurt others? Do I show care and offer help to those who are needy or suffering around me? Or do we turn a blind eye to certain people choosing to just darken our hearts towards them with bitterness and contempt? Well, God knows when we're being genuine towards others or not. We may fool others or ourselves, but we can never fool God. And whatever dark situation we find ourselves in, can we still sense Jesus' presence with us, calling us more deeply into his light, to follow him more closely in that light? I think that last question is one that's most fitting to what we're going through right now. With all the fears and anxieties, the closings and the limitations that seem to be spreading as fast as the virus itself. It's probably safe to say that none of us has ever gone through an experience like this before, at least not on such a wide scale. So if Lent is like a long walk through a desert, a search for an oasis with wellsprings of Easter joy, then there are many people now rapidly growing in their thirst and weariness in this journey. Yet Jesus promised never to abandon us. His light always shines before us, showing us the path to walk. And that path involves faith, courage, hope, and love. We may not be able to see clearly the end of this long tunnel we may feel we're in right now, but Jesus still gives us more than enough light of his love to see us all the way through. So this very unique light for us can afford us a golden opportunity to reappreciate many things that we may have taken for granted on a daily basis. Perhaps it's calling us to step up and be more proactive in our faith and letting our loved ones and others know just how much they really do mean to us and how we can all work together somehow, some way, even though we may be stuck in having to keep a healthy distance from each other for a while. And that really underlines what Easter is all about. That the problems and perils that we face in our life's journey are never stronger than the hope and the joy that is to come for all those who remain in the faith and love of our Savior Jesus Christ. For he is truly the light of our world. Grow in his light and remain in it always. This time we now profess our faith using the Nicene Creed as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Placing our trust in Jesus' hands, knowing that he is the light of the world, we make the following petitions. That the light of God's healing power may pour forth upon our nation and around the world, especially in Italy, hopefully soon putting an end to the destructive virus that has affected all our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners, that God may grant safety and faithful refreshment to us all. And during this time of crisis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of God's protective care may shine upon medical and emergency personnel who work directly in harm's way with the coronavirus, and that scientists may be filled with the light of God's wisdom to soon discover means to heal those afflicted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government officials may be guided and strengthened in making prudent decisions to better ensure safety and peace for all to enjoy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are blinded from seeing Christ's love and hope due to hatred, prejudice, fear, despair, or sin, may experience the forgiving compassion of Jesus' light of goodness to open their eyes and cast out their darkness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of Christ's mercy may ease the sufferings of those who are hungry and poor, or those burdened by grief, sorrow, loneliness, or loss, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of healing may bring comfort to those undergoing physical or mental suffering, especially victims of the coronavirus, as well as for students Jane Mullen, Georgia Palladino, Mary Llewellyn, Frank Ianco, and those listed in our prayer book of requests and in our bulletin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the light of eternity may forgive and welcome our deceased brothers and sisters into heavenly glory, especially those who've died during this pandemic, as well as Leroy Schroeder, and our several special intentions, Janet Andrews, and the deceased family members of Dominic and Anna Sarisi, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For your prayer is offered now from the silence of your hearts. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of light and truth, we look to you for wisdom and strength to carry out what you command us. May we become greater signs of the light of your love during our Lenten journey, recognizing your presence in our midst, especially in one another, and grant us prayers through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And you are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we're gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life, and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Salvatore our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Benedict and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, 
your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, a glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. And behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep you safe from eternal death. Communion antiphon, the Lord anointed my eyes. I went, I washed, I saw, and I believed in God. Let us pray. O oh God, enlighten everyone who comes into this world. Illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you, with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Take care.